and come para profound and infinitely that all is rarely of us now we see it hear it receive Morning, everyone. Morning. 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 Uh, this is the uh, last talk of the year, and uh, basically, uh, in this short uh, period of time. I'm just going to sum up uh, the things that I concentrated on with you. Can you give us a water? Yeah. Water. I, uh, I saw the word Diana and uh, uh, when I was much younger, I thought that was uh, what Zen meditation was. But actually, Jhana uh, uh, became of itself when the Aryans, who were the Aborigines, Aboriginals of India before Buddha, uh, brought, uh, it was their spiritual legacy that brought dhyana into being. And it's kind of interesting. They, taught, they even taught it to uh, their, their class of people and also even to the slaves. And the purpose of it was to um, have a one-pointed cultivation. So this, this is important for us to understand because we are uh, in meditation practitioners, we should know that one pointed concentration is part of the scenery of Zazen, but not the completion. Uh, you, you know, uh, when I read the word, the completion of the self, that's really, um, Term in the sense that it struck me that there are very few um, ways of thinking or or uh, terms that come forth like this is this is the completion of the self. So that really struck me. Like there is a practice that there is a completion of the self, the fulfillment of the self and the understanding of reality, the nature of reality and what, what it is. So coming back to Yana, um, 
this one pointed uh, thinking uh, concentration. And also the Chinese translation of dhyana is undisturbed cognition. But still, this is not the completion of the self. You, you could say this is, this is undisturbed uh, concentration or this is quiet thinking. This is the example and demonstration. Okay. So it wasn't until Nagaharajuna uh, came and he was like a second century Christ era. And he discovered, uh, actually after the Buddha's teachings, uh, he predicted that they would be lost. And it was not until Nagaharajuna came into being, and that was, what is it, uh, first or second century, that he revealed um, Buddha's teaching. Of and even when uh, Siddhartha, uh, before he became Buddha, he, uh, in his search, he identified, uh, even be it's, this, is, uh, this is before he left the palace, uh, he identified the function of karma as the activity of impermanence. There's nothing fixed. Nothing is stable. Or oh, you could even say uh, what we are experiencing now is impermanence. But since the beginning of this year, the COVID, the time of uncertainty, and all, all these, uh, a collage of things that went with it, social injustice, climate change, the fires, the floods, uh, the people that are dying. And actually, this was what uh, has happened to uh, humankind in history. It's just that we've been protected by technology. In this disguise of technology, we don't experience these things, but we, it is, what Buddha experienced, wars, uh, what Dogen experienced, uh, people dying, corpses stacked along the rivers. It's the same thing. And now we're having a taste of what Buddha's first noble truth is. Life is impermanent. So this is pretty fantastic that we actually have a practice uh, that we can live and function and not feel, although there is isolation and not feel isolated at the same time. We are still alive. We still have curiosity. We can still be joyful, but it depends. Uh, and, and we needn't be confused, but it depends on the strength of your Zaza, how the self is settled in the self. Actually, for us practitioners, it's a test now to see how settled you are during these uncertain times. So coming back to Naga, uh, Naga also, you see, you see him represented with five snakes uh, behind him. And um, he created, uh, he created, maybe he didn't create, but 
he he discovered the middle way. In times of Buddha, uh, there was uh, austerities and uh, severe austerities and, and on one side and indulgence on the other. And these were the two extremes. Middle way doesn't just mean in the middle of the two extremes. And these extremes can be reduced to opposites, all the opposites that we encounter in our life. But it's, it's uh, what he's, the middle way is not in between the two, but it's the union or disillusion of the opposites. And this is, this is what uh, frees you from suffering. And humanity is plagued by suffering all, all of its life because of these two opposites. So, I mean, that, that's a great revolution. That's the greatest revolution in humankind. In fact, it was years ago. I don't know if you remember the historian Arnold Toynbee. He says the greatest thing that comes to the West is the Buddha Dharma. So back to uh, Nagaharajuna and uh, his uh, definition of emptiness. Emptiness is, means when these two opposites, uh, we, we are not trying to get rid of anything. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. It says my, my internet is unstable. <laughs> okay. But it's, it's not that we, we try to get rid of anything. This is Dharma. But uh, the, the scattered mind has, has, the, has the feeling of distraction, of chaos, of disorder. We can't focus. It makes us isolated it makes us depressed the scattered mind has an activity we're not trying to get rid of the activity but we are going to use the activity and and um like i mentioned before the aggregates or the five skandhas in the chinese and japanese kanji it means the five bundles. So within that scattering, there's unscattering. Within any opposite, there's the opposite. And, and this is how the universe functions. We can't get rid of anything, but we use everything. These are the principles of the universe. And that's why Zen uh, specifically has these statements as it is, because this is right in the center of the horizontal and the vertical line. The vertical representing the absolute, the horizontal representing the conventional. These are two truths that Naga brought out also. The conventional truth, the absolute truth. And when they meet, that's the when. And that when, or that as it is, or that moment, or that moment, the instant of the moment of the present is anchored into impermanency because everything is changing. Dot, dot by dot by dot by dot. And that's the when, or that's Genjo Kong. So that's, that's uh, really great how Zen, uh, expressed itself for us to find out through our own practice that this is actually true. This is liberation. This is freedom. And Nagir Harajuna, his definition, I like this very much, of shunyata, of emptiness, is it's the absence of intrinsic 
an independent existence. That's that's your self-centeredness. That's that's what they call own your own being, independent of everything. Your self-centeredness. In other words, it is the expression of the fundamental interrelatedness of all things. Everything of all things. It is the shunyata is the expression of the fundamental interrelatedness of all things, of everything and of our experiences. That's the underlying nature of the universe. That's the nature of ultimate reality. I'm skipping around here, but bear with me. It was uh, a, a definition, uh, kukai. Ku is, is emptiness. Kai is realm. And kukai uh, in this uh, translation, in this particular translation, It's not physical, it's not in a physical sense. Emptiness is not a physical sense. Okay? But a sense of cognition in which the activities is empty, is dissolved. The scattering, the non-scattering. Even non-scattering is dissolved. The opposites are dissolved. That, that's what it means by empty. Dissolve, and I like this very much. So if that's dissolved, the self is dissolved. The incomplete self is dissolved. And the Tathagata, the self, uh, this emptiness and the Tathagata are experienced together. I like this very much because I've never, it, it give, for me, it gives activity. It gives life to Tathagata. Uh, I've never seen those two words together, emptiness and Tathagata, when they, they are experienced together. We, we are experiencing Tathagata. We are Tathagata. And so... Uh, There's so so much to say, say, but uh, I think uh, I just read one small paragraph, and Niose is going to uh, continue with what we did this year, also. Okay, even with jnana, if one only trains in concentrating the scattered mind condition into a single point, this would not be the equivalent of training to bring the self into completion. If training consisted only of single pointed concentration, then this would be one sided cultivation. Why is this just one sided? Because it would restrain the activity of the scattered mind. Since even the scattered mind is an activity of the mind, we is is not as is not is not as bad as we think it is the scattered mind it's an activity it's it's a a kind of being in itself a little respect for the scattered mind 
even the scattered mind is an activity. One also has to learn this activity of the scattered mind. That is the activity of the distracted mind. In other words, the condition of the mind concentrated in a single point needs to be reversed, needs to be reversed in the opposite direction of an activity characteristic by scattering. It is precisely by learning and practicing this way that the complete range of the activities of the mind can be understood. The complete range, not just one side, not just two sides, but in between or beyond. The com this is the, the union or, or dissolution of the opposites which means also the ego or the self-centeredness so that we go beyond it. I think this is enough for you to chew on and to practice. Um, Jose, you, you wanna, usually, usually at the end of the year, usually at the end of the year, I, I sum up the things that we did but but he'll he'll say some things, okay? But but what I want to say before Jose starts is that these talks and these programs and these things that we do are just to invite you to start sitting, to find out from by yourself if this is true or not. What's true? This is this is your invitation. Okay, thank you. Everyone can hear me? Yes. All right, you can put on gallery. So I, I guess, uh, uh, it's interesting. Uh, what Roshi was saying about uh, Diana, and um, maybe reflecting on Diana, um, it made me uh, think about uh, a Bodhidharma uh, coming from uh, a China, uh, coming from India, actually to China, and and Bodhidharma. This is in uh, five hundred. And he he brought he brought uh, the practice of actually of facing the wall and transmitted uh, the practice of of just facing the wall. So everybody, um, actually, a lot of practitioners in China um, thought that actually Bodhidharma was doing zazen. Or, or thought that that Bodhidharma was 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 sitting, but that was only um, a very small slice of the view of an outside view of what people, conventional people, could see what Bodhidharma was doing, and uh, Bodhidharma, uh, of of course. Uh, made his journey and then uh, ended up in a cave for nine years facing the wall. And within, within this uh, nine years of facing the wall, uh, it's not about reaching Buddhahood. It's not about having enlightenment. Uh, it's not about becoming a Buddha, but it is actually the everyday life of what we do is actually Zen. So it's tying your shoes is Zen. It's being with the pandemic is Zen. It's being online is Zen. It's cooking is Zen, cleaning is Zen. So not only is it just sitting, but it actually is everything that 
um, uh, everything that all people, all beings, and all things in the entire universe do. So we have the, we have the, you would say we have the zendo, <laughs> or we have the, the emptiness in which we cultivate, and then we have life in which we activate. So this is a, this is a very important um, a point for us to be, uh, it, it's actually to appreciate our life or to live our life as it is. So of course, uh, yesterday uh, Roshi was saying, oh, Nyoze, you should say this and, and give a whole report. And then I was all, I, I kind of was, <laughs> I was overwhelmed. But at the same time, right now, as I speak, I'm very excited to actually, um, to say this because uh, it does then make the opposites then come together. Um, so so uh, with this, I would like to actually, uh, this morning, I, I, I couldn't think of what, what to say uh, last night. So this morning, uh, right after Zazen, then I started to write this whole list of actually, uh, what the Zen Center does behind, behind the view of, of this box, of, of this, uh, of course, of, of this year. And um, uh, I, I will go, go down this list. So this, this, is a, this is a program view, and it's a review of, of what we did actually this entire year. And, um, uh, so all the things actually that we do at Sonoma Mountain Zen Center is based actually on dhyana or on this big dhyana of, of Zazen. So we have provided um, continuous online a morning and evening Zazen. And we've, we've had in, uh, attendance from uh, Israel, uh, Kenya, Iceland, uh, Poland, um, England, Denmark, Japan, Mexico, and then of course, everyone here all around the United States and also Canada, <laughs> all around the United States. Uh, in the winter time in February, we held uh, on, uh, on site. So here, this was before the pandemic. Uh, we, we held a winter ongo, so a one month a peaceful dwelling, uh, and Totai Michał Trzynurszcz from Poland actually led led the ongo here. Uh, during the ongo, we had a Tokudo um, monks ordination ceremony for Genzen Ed Kadmin, a Jin Boon Jesse Brunette, a Konzenshi Peter Pocock, and Totai Michał Trzynurszcz from Poland. So we had a ordination ceremony. Uh, we had a uh, University of San Francisco annually comes up uh, from the Department of, of Eastern Thought and Eastern Religion. And we had an overnight with uh, 20 students that stay here and practice with us. Um, Reverend Yuko Yamada Sensei, the student of Ayu Yamaroshi, and also met uh, Kashin. Uh, through Aichi Senman Nisoto Nunnery in Japan 2018. Uh, she visited here and she's from uh, Shogakuji, Japan. Um, uh, starting March, actually we, we, uh, we started actually a, a, a 10 month, a Tuesday evening intensive of the study of uh, a deepest practice, deepest wisdom, which is a uh, fascicles of Dogen. So we've been studying that and we will actually end our last uh, Tuesday uh, study group actually um, the, this coming Tuesday. Um, we had a, a birth of the Buddha online celebration, offering sweet water and flowers uh, for the Buddha within us. Um, we uh, added a uh, ordinary beauty, a workshop program led by Kashin Kwong, 
So Sonoma Mountain Zen Center's uh, Gato, which is aesthetics in the arts, and also how they relate or how the arts relate to transmission of our practice in the, in the environment that we live in. Um, then online and in summertime in August, we had Myoju uh, Gosha Sredetska Imhoff from Poland lead our online uh, ongo practice period. Uh, we have weekly meditation instructions and also Kwong Roshi uh, has been giving talks uh, to Poland, Iceland, Shambhala, and also Sonoma Mountain Zen Center's affiliate sitting groups, South Sound and, and Del Rey Zen. Um, I've been giving online talks for Sonoma State University. And also we've been, we hold a, um, a monthly session, one to seven days every month, or I, we call it actually urban session. Now, now urban online sessions. <laughs> we have, uh, let's see, uh, we, we just finished our Rohatsu session and also Tetsuya, which is our all night sitting. So it's a continuous block of sitting from 12 to 4 a.m. And then in the morning, we, we uh, uh, made an on-site uh, founders ceremony. So 15, of us walked down to Shinryu Suzuki Roshi's uh, stupa and then had a ceremony uh, actually last Saturday. Um, Sonoma Mountain Zen Center also welcomes on site weekly outside volunteer uh, people to come and do uh, work for us too, uh, basically focusing on the demolition of, of the cabins and removing our cabins and also uh, cleaning up the grounds. Um, the volunteer program can any be be uh, where from like uh, Zenda store, gardening, uh, office work, land clearing, brush maintenance of the land, maintenance of Suzuki Roshi stupa, chainsawing down trees. Uh, there's been many months of cleaning up the demolition of the cabins, a uh, website work, uh, creating pro. Uh, uh, COVID protocol. Um, there's been countless uh, meetings uh, with the president and board of trustees to, to actually steer Sonoma Mountain Zen Center through, through the pandemic. Um, Dokusan, Roshi and I have been providing Dokusan uh, Monday through Thursday uh, to people. Uh, we've been uh, also having a Saturday community work, kind of work fest work uh, programs to actually clear out the demolition and load it into debris dumpsters. Huh? With mask and distance. Oh, oh with yeah, mask, of uh, course. Oh, caution's telling me with mask and distance, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Kwong Roshi has been uh, working on his forthcoming book, uh, a Sky Mind, uh, so, and it's been accepted by Wisdom Publications. Um, those, are the, those are kind of our programs, not only mentioning that, but we have actually the running and the maintaining daily on-site schedule here. So we have constant maintenance of the infrastructure. It could be electricity, fixing the pumps, fixing leaks for our buildings, um, uh, automobiles, uh, making sure her automobiles run right. We have uh, 16, let's see, we have uh, 12 structures, uh, 12 buildings on Sonoma Mountain. And this doesn't actually include the five cabins that we're ripping down. So it's almost 20 structures that we have on site. Um, this could be the daily schedule, could be cooking, it could be cleaning. It could be doing office administration, gardening. It could be shopping. Um, it could be having resident staff meetings. Um, on top of that, we're, we're actually uh, uh, trying to finish and working on the Mandala Temple building project. So this is also on site. So this, uh, this uh, makes a, 
projects and, and construction. So this is, we completed in March, uh, actually the completion and the raising of our new agricultural building. Uh, the Sangha guest cabin right now is going through a remodel and renovation and it will be done at the end of this month, uh, complying with the county building department. Um, our water system, uh, we are actually drinking new water uh, that we drilled a whole new entire well at Roshi's house and uh, the well is 500 feet deep and, and there are three, uh, three water tanks, three uh, 10,000 water tanks and that includes actually fire with fire hydrants actually now at the Zen Center. So we're actually drinking new water. So we redid the whole water system and that's been signed off and, and uh, hooked up actually uh, two months ago. Um, we completed our two new resident guest buildings and they've been actually signed off for use, but we're waiting for the pandemic to stop so we could use them. Um, there's been a new path uh, to the new buildings with ADA compliant plan for signing off at the end of this year. And then not to mention the demolition and remodel of our five uh, guest cabins now. Uh, we're on our fourth dumpster load uh, to take the debris of the cabin cabins away. So that's, that, this is just actually a very short list that, that we have all actually accomplished. And I think I, I do remember uh, you, Roshi, saying about something um, uh, the accomplishment is, is almost like 99% of the accomplishment is when you just sit down. <laughs> so that's, that's uh, Roshi, that's actually my report that I have to say today. And I'm sorry that it's, it's quite fast because the, the list I wrote was, was quite long, but then I tried to condense it. This is actually a very condensed version of the entire year. And I'm sure everybody's box that we see is, is a very small a fragment of what we see and what we even uh, can, can even fathom. So every box that we see here is actually the myriads and myriads and myriads of worlds of the Dharma, you would, you would say, um, would you say? Of the interest net. Oh, of, of the interest net. Yes. Yeah. So we are all connected through the facets of the jewels that we see with our eyes, the jewels that are in your rooms, on your altar, or your blinds of your room, the doors, you know, the lights, the chairs that you sit on, the robes that you wear, the candles that you have ignited. It's all a part. So this is this is all the doing of of just actually sitting down. Yeah. So, so Roshi, you wanna, would you like to say something to end? I think that's enough. Okay. <laughs> you, we, we, we wish you, you know, happy, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. Keep sitting. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you all.